And now finally, at long last, we come to the Art and Architecture Thesaurus, which is another product out of the Getty Institution. Now remember that the CDWA recommends selecting some values from the Art and Architecture Thesaurus. CDWA is an element set, a very large element set of, as I said before, 500 plus elements or a reduced set of 36, but either way, it is a set of elements and the Art and Architecture Thesaurus provides values. It is obviously a thesaurus and it provides a controlled vocabulary from which you can select terms to plug into those values in the CDWA or any other element set. So in our previous video, we looked at the object or work element in CDWA. And remember that one of the terms that it suggested as an example was, I'm sure I'll mispronounce this again, carte de viste, and it provides term source AAT, Art and Architecture Thesaurus, and a term source ID, the number of that particular term in Art and Architecture. So let's take a look at that particular term. I'll, I just copy and pasted that term from the CDWA example into Art and Architecture, and there it is, carte de viste. Now this icon here allows you to view the hierarchy. So let's actually do that and we can see where carte de viste exists in the Art and Architecture Thesaurus's hierarchy. And the Art and Architecture Thesaurus is a very deep hierarchy. It has a lot of categories and subcategories and sub-subcategories and we'll get into that a little bit more in a moment. So the top level of the hierarchy from where Carte de Viste lives is the object's facet. The Art and Architecture Thesaurus is a faceted classification scheme. Remember that uh, way back in Unit 1 we talked about faceted classification and the idea is that with multiple facets you can much more richly describe a single object and each facet has its own logic to how you can describe something. And those can be anything you like. They can be dates, they can be subjects, etc. In this case we have the objects facet. And subcategory of the objects facet is visual and verbal communication. Visual works, Photographs is a subcategory of visual works, card photographs, and finally carte de viste. So we have carte de viste fairly far down in the hierarchy under the object's facet. Now let's go back up to the top level of the art and architecture thesaurus and look at some of the facets and the hierarchy under those facets we have quite a few facets. We have physical attributes, we have styles and periods, we have agents, activities, materials, etc. Ways of describing different features of art and architectural objects, right? Who made it? By what activities was a thing made? What was the style and the period in which it was made, etc.? What are the materials out of which an object was made? And it goes on and on. Now, the point of art and architecture is that each facet has its own logic and you can drill down into a single facet fairly deeply and through a combination of descriptive terms across multiple facets, you can very richly describe an art object. So let's drill down into two facets for an example. Let's look at styles and periods and the object facet. So let's look at styles and periods. We'll click on this little hierarchy icon. And styles and periods breaks down into three categories, general era, by region, and generic. So let's look at the era 
and this breaks down into, again, a number of subcategories. We have ancient, prehistoric, protohistoric. You know, protohistoric breaks down into a number of subcategories, Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, etc. Um, we have styles and periods by religion, by, you know, time period, modern and contemporary. The point is you get lots of subcategories and those subcategories have further subcategories. So let's say we want to look at art objects from the Iron Age. Turns out that Iron Age divides up into three subcategories of its own, early, middle, and late. I, for one, wasn't aware that the Iron Age broke down in that way, but then I'm not a historian. Now let's back up to the top of the art and architecture thesaurus hierarchies and look at the objects facet. Click on this little icon and drill down into the objects facet. The objects facet, again, breaks down into multiple subcategories. You have built environments, you have furnishings, etc. And again, each of those has its own subcategories. Built environments breaks down into settlements and landscapes, or built complexes, single built works, open spaces, each of which is going to break down even further. Again, a very rich hierarchy of categories and subcategories and sub-subcategories. So let's say we're interested in for the sake of example, furnishing. Say we're interested in describing furniture in your house. So let's look at furnishings. What this breaks down into is furnishings by form or function or by location or context. What is a piece of furniture for? Is it for sitting on or putting your feet up on? Or by location or context, is a piece of furniture for your kitchen or your living room, etc. So let's say we're interested in furniture for sitting on. Furniture by form or function, chairs or sofas, things for sitting on. Look at that. We have seating furniture, single seating, multiple seating, etc. Drill down into that. We have chairs, stools, sofas, benches, all kinds of things that you can sit on either by yourself or with others. As it turns out, there are even multiple kinds of sofas. Who knew there were so many kinds of sofas? So I wasn't even aware that a canapé was a type of sofa. I always thought that was an appetizer, but then what do I know? The point here is that you can drill down as far as you like into the hierarchy in order to adequately describe an object using the art and architecture thesaurus. And you can drill down as far as you like in multiple facets in art and architecture so that you can very richly describe a single object. I could, for example, drill down into the, you know, the styles and periods facet and describe something as pre-Columbian or Mesoamerican. I could describe a sofa or a canapé, whatever that is. I could drill down into the time facet and say that something comes from the Middle Iron Age. And then I could string all these things together and describe something as a sofa from Middle Iron Age Mesoamerica. I doubt that such a thing would make sense or even exist, but I could describe something in that way if I were so inclined. I could even go on and describe the color of something. I could describe what agents made it, what people or organizations are responsible for creating that particular object. I could talk about the materials that an object is made out of. I could talk about the activities that went into making it, the processes that were involved in its construction. 
Good luck doing that with the Library of Congress subject headings, first of all. The Art and Architecture Thesaurus is much narrower than the Library of Congress subject headings, but it is much deeper. The point is, is that it's not intended to describe everything in the world, it's intended to describe art and architecture, but it does so at a very deep level that you can string together these very complex sets of description within an individual facet and then put all of those descriptions across facets together allows you to very richly describe art objects. The point of the art and architecture thesaurus is that you can generate these rich descriptions of any art or architectural object. If you have an element set that you can plug those values into. Now the CDWA and the Art and Architecture Thesaurus, of course, play together nicely. They were designed to work together because they are both products of the Getty Institution, but you could also plug in values from Art and Architecture into Dublin Core. You may need to qualify your Dublin Core, but it can be done. The point is, you have a controlled vocabulary like art and architecture that provides you with values for elements in a metadata schema such as the CDWA.